So now we're going to learn how to open an existing CAD file and how to edit that file. Here's what we're going to accomplish. We're going to make some more room in this big reception area for more chairs and tables. In the process, we're going to learn how to open a file, save a file with a new name, and then we're going to learn how to do the following editing commands. Zoom, pan, move, make selection sets, copy, rotate, and explode a complex object, and then finally how to delete objects. First, we'll go up to the application button and click on it and go to open. We're going to open a drawing in, a, in the sample files folder or wherever your instructor has such files for you. For instance, I'll go to the C drive, navigate to the sample file CADS folder, double click on it and find a file called office.dwg. That DWG is the extension for AutoCAD drawing files. We'll double click on that file to open it in AutoCAD. As soon as you open that file, you should save it in a discrete location for you rather than work on a shared file. So if your instructor wants you to immediately go to the application button and click on Save As. Choose to save this as an AutoCAD drawing file and then navigate to the location that your instructor has you save your files to. In this case, I'll choose my own personal My Documents folder and then a folder inside there called CAD where I put my sample files. You can make a folder of your own right within this dialog box by clicking on that icon for new folder if needed. But I've already made a folder for me called CAD and I'll double click on it to get into that folder and add my name to the end of the file name, being careful to leave the period and DWG alone. It's important to realize now that AutoCAD has a history of two different Office files. If you look at the application button list of recent files, there is the current file that you have plus the old file in the samples folder. So be careful when opening and saving and using this shortcut list of recent files. Now that we have this Office file open, we immediately see that it's a rather large scale file and it's difficult to see details. So we need to zoom in on parts of the drawing. Also, I need to point out that this is just a 2D file, not 3D. So we're only going to look at this file in the visual style called 2D wireframe. We'll learn about 3D later. We've got to learn how to walk before we can run. There are a few ways to zoom in on this 2D file. The first is simply to hit Z on the keyboard, Z for zoom. And notice that down in the command line that Z is a shortcut for zoom. We could type in the whole word or just use the keyboard shortcut Z. So I've hit Z and now I'll just hit enter. There are many options for almost any command that you use. We can see down in the command line window a few of those options. For the sake of keeping our eyes up on the screen for this tutorial, we're going to turn on a feature called dynamic input down there in the status bar. Now when we enter commands, we see some of the results and options right at our mouse pointer. Now to see these options, I'll have to hit the down arrow on the keyboard. There's a list of options there for zooming. The first we'll learn about is all. Just A for all and then hit enter. There, now we can see the whole file. So now we're going to learn how to zoom in on a particular area of the screen. Like, let's say we want to zoom in on a receptionist desk in the lobby. We'll use the Z command, enter, and then see the options again for hitting the down arrow. One option there is window, so we'll type in W and then use the mouse to define a window around the receptionist's desk. There, we've zoomed in. Let's zoom out again. Z, enter, A, enter for all. Now let's learn a better way for zooming. How about just using the scroll wheel mouse to do the trick? If you have a three mouse button and a middle button is a scroll wheel, just rotate it up or away from you and you zoom in. Then just the opposite, if you rotate it towards you or down, it zooms out. So isn't that a lot simpler? Let's just use that for now on for our discussion. But one more thing, you could zoom in on a particular object and just that one object. Hit Z and then the option O for object and choose an object like this chair or several chairs by clicking on it and then hitting enter. And there you go, you've instantly zoomed in on that object. So now that we've zoomed in, we might want to focus our attention to somewhere else on the drawing, like over to the computer on the desk to the left. There are at least two ways to pan over. The first is the command pan or just P. 
that immediately brings up a tool that looks like a hand. We can just hold down the left mouse button and drag our view to the left or right. When finished with the tool, just hit Escape on the keyboard to exit that command. That was nice, but a little bit cumbersome, wouldn't you say? So here's a better method to pan. Just use your mouse scroll wheel center button and just hold it down. Don't let go and drag the view around. Much easier. And then just let go when you're done. It's important to notice that we're not moving anything yet on the file, just our view of the drawing. We haven't moved the chair or the computer, just our view of these objects. All right, now that we know how to zoom and pan, let's learn how to move some objects. Let's say that your boss has assigned you to put another set of chairs and desks in the lobby. We need more tables and chairs because the business is starting to take on more clients and they need more space to sit down in groups in the lobby. So we're going to move the room label lobby and then we're going to move the receptionist and then we're going to make a copy of the tables and chairs. First, how do we move these things? Well, first I have to make a little disclaimer here. I'm teaching you about some basics of CAD, but we haven't yet learned about the Cartesian coordinate system as shown down here, the XYZ coordinates. And we're also not going to use any tracking modes like orthographic or polar tracking, and neither are we going to use snap modes. We'll learn about these things later, so today we're just moving and copying things in a rather inaccurate way of doing things. We'll get accurate later. So how do we move the lobby room label down there? There are a couple of methods, but first we have to learn how to select objects. First, zoom in on the lobby room label. We're going to move all three objects, the word lobby, the line, and the box for the room number. So we need to select three objects. That in itself has a few nice options. We can just click on each object one at a time, and as we do, the object shows us a blue dot. It's a handle, and the objects appear dotted. As we click on more objects, we now have what's called a selection set. In other words, multiple objects. By the way, you can hit escape to deselect the objects. Another way to select several objects is to use the mouse. Just drag the mouse to the right and make this blue box, which is a selection method of an all-inclusive only method. Only things that are entirely inside of the blue box will be selected. The other method is to drag the mouse to the left. That's a crossing window. Anything touching this box, anything that this box crosses, will be included in the selection set. So that's how to select objects. Let's deselect them, hit escape, and now we'll learn how to move in just a minute. So there are two methods for moving. One is just to select the objects and then drag them by clicking on the edge of one of the objects. But that's a fairly inaccurate way of doing things. The other is to use the move command. We'll use the move command, or just M for short. It immediately asks us to select the objects. Use any method you wish to use and then hit enter to say you're done defining your selection set. Now it asks us to define a base point by which to grab the objects. We'll just pick the top of the letter L. Remember, we're not using what's called snap modes or the coordinate system yet. So I've clicked on the top of the L and it's moving the objects, but I want to move these objects down and off the screen below the receptionist's desk. How can we do that? That's easy. You've just learned some methods. Just zoom out with the mouse scroll button and then pan down with the scroll button and zoom back in. That was easy. And we still have a hold of the lobby label because we haven't hit the mouse left button yet. Now we'll position the label around here and hit the mouse left button. There, we've moved it. Let's make some more room for the tables and chairs by moving the receptionist's desk. That person may not like that. We might be making some enemies here, but we got to make some room. So we hit M for move and then enter. Select the receptionist's desk and chairs and plants and then hit enter to complete that selection set. Choose a base point and then move it by clicking the mouse left button there. But now you have too many plants, so we'll have to move them. I'll move them over here and over there. Done. So now we'll get to copy a table and some chairs. The conference table is what's known as a block. It's something that's been grouped together. We'll learn about blocks later. So how do we copy and paste it in? There are several ways. We just type in copy or CO and hit enter. Then it asks us to select something. So we'll just click on any part of that block and hit enter. Again, just like when we moved 
it's asking us for a base point. So I'll choose a point in the middle of the table and drag it over to the middle of the lobby. There, that was easy. It's still asking us if we want to place more copies. We don't, so we'll hit Escape. Now, some folks would say that you could use the Windows or Mac tools or whatever operating system for copying and pasting, but that's even less accurate. When using those methods like Control C on the PC to copy and then Control V to paste, we've accomplished our goal, yet there was no way to specify a point by which we grabbed and pasted the objects accurately. So I advise you not to use those methods unless you recognize its lack of accuracy. So now, Let's do the same thing with some comfortable chairs for people to sit in the corners of the lobby, like we see there in the vice president's reception area. Those are blocks of four chairs and two plants in each block. We'll copy them and place two copies near the corners of the lobby. Again, our learning objective is not to use blocks per se, and there are better methods of placing these things, but we're just learning how to copy objects. In this case, I'll select the object first and then copy, Give it a base point and place that object twice, once here and another there. Done. But now, no one can get through these doors and by the chairs. Hmm, that's bad planning on our part. But how about this? Why don't we rotate them into the corners and eliminate the plants? We'll put those plants someplace else later. So how to rotate? To rotate or twist an object, we'll hit RO for rotate and then hit enter. Give it a base point by which to rotate, like the back of the middle two chairs, and then we're rotating dynamically. We can do that, or better still, why don't we accurately rotate them 45 degrees by just typing that in. There. And the others we'll do in the same way. In this case, we'll rotate them negative 45 degrees. Done. But now we'll have to get rid of those extra plants. They can't be in the middle of the walls, so we're going to have to break this particular group of chairs and plants apart and then delete just the plants. Now, this is a little advanced here, but you can handle it. Let's say we don't know the command for breaking things apart. Where could we learn how? Well, that's a good question. Typically, if you ask the help area for some help, you might type in something like break an object or break a cell. You get some help about just the break command and not exactly what we want. This is one of those instances where not knowing the exact real command for something really places us at a disadvantage for using help. Additionally, you could waste some time at YouTube and search around, but typically two things happen. First, you hit a wall again because you don't know the exact search terms to search for, or something else happened you get distracted and start watching videos about kitties. So let's come back to the CAD program and take a look. Hmm, it's not going to be in the drawings tool because we're not drawing something. How about the modify area? That sounds good. We want to modify something. There it is, explode. It even shows us a little picture or animation of what will happen if we use this command. It explodes a complex object or block into more simpler elements. That's exactly what we want to do. So we'll be sure first thing that we have nothing selected by hitting escape because we might explode things and not even know that we did that. And then we'll type in explode and choose the object and hit enter. There, we've exploded the block into its simpler parts. Now we can delete the plants with the delete key or move them someplace else. So we're done with this exercise. We've made some room for the lobby for more chairs and tables and we've demonstrated that we can do that with room to spare.